You know, I marvel at the fact that at the age of 17, when I'd never cracked open a Bible on my own, the previous year, a little bit of exposure had come. But prior to that, never opened a Bible. I'm not even sure we had one in the home. I think my dad had one. But I'm lying in a hospital bed. Do you know why? Because I wanted out of life. My life had no meaning. I wanted to be a cricketer. I wanted to play tennis. I did it well, but I would never have excelled to the ranks of the best. So I wasn't even going to make it there. I just did it, played at a university level. That was it. And as I'm lying in this hospital bed, having attempted to take my own life, a man walks in with a little red Gideon's New Testament. I couldn't reach out for it because my body was dehydrated. The moisture was gone. It was a servant in the house who rushed me to the hospital. And my mother takes that Bible that he gives and she says, you really can't stay here. My son is in critical condition. And he said, ma'am, your son needs this more than anything else. And so he opens to John chapter 14, where Jesus is talking to Thomas. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. And then he goes on in verse 19 and says, Because I live, you also shall live. The power of the Word of God to crack open this encrusted heart of a young man who'd never had the wisdom to open it before. And I begin to pray. And I say, Lord, if you are the Lord of life, take me out of this hospital room. I will leave no stone, un no stone unturned in my pursuit of truth. That day is so vivid in my mind, every time I go to Delhi, my home city in India, I always take a taxi and I go and park outside that hospital room and I just saw the hospital building and I just sit there for about 10 or 15 minutes and recall what happened when I was 17 years old. It happened with the Word of God. It happened with the Word of God. And as I walked out of there, five days later, the doctor looked at me and he said, you know, young man, we've given you back your life, but we cannot make you want to live. I just said, doctor, you don't need to worry about that. I had that little red New Testament and I walked away from that room. The man who brought that New Testament into my room died last year. I spoke to him a few days before he died from our home in Atlanta. He was living in Los Angeles. I wanted to come over. He said, Rav, don't, 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 don't. He said, you've got many, many other things to do. But here's what he said to me. He said, I just want to say to you, I sit down sometimes and watch you on YouTube, and the tears run down my face, and I think to myself, the main reason God brought, God brought me into this world was to bring that Bible to you. I said, Fred, God brought you into the world for a lot more than just that. He said, no man. He said, I just want you to know, I can't say enough of what it means that you're one of my sons in the faith and it gives me the greatest amount of joy. Thy word is true. Thy word is true. If there is just one application you take away from tonight, can I urge you to open the scriptures and make it a commitment to read the Gospel of John?